Muhammad the Prophet. Oh. Huh? You can ask the cops. Call the cops. Yeah. Hey, 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 no. Take this out. Stop, you're on film. Please, hey. What's going on? What's going on? Hey, he's attacking me. Come here, cop. That is video footage from a zombie walk in Pennsylvania. A group of atheists thought they would show that they're free. They live in a free country, a secular, secular democracy, not a theocracy. Someone was dressed up as the zombie pope. Someone was dressed up as a zombie Mohammed. It might be distasteful, but sometimes that's what freedom is like. But as you saw there, the zombie Mohammed was assaulted by someone who doesn't like it. Well, joining us now from New York City is Pamela Geller to tell us how this crazy story and, Pamela, welcome back to the program. Great to see you again. Ezra, thank you so much for having me and for talking about this critical issue. Now, listen, I, I'm not the kind of fellow who would dress up as a zombie pope or a zombie Mohammed, but I believe in freedom of speech, both in Canada and the United States. Here's a guy who was, you know, making fun of Mohammed. Fine, free country. But he was attacked. We saw it on tape. What happened? Who Was the fellow who attacked him charged? What did the cop do? What happened at trial? Well, the cop did bring charges, and what is shocking is the non-Muslim judge ruled according to the Sharia. He dismissed the case. He said first off that it was a he said, she said, when in fact the policeman said that the Muslim who had attacked the infidel, the zombie Muhammad, um, had, he had indeed made physical contact with him. He had, he had indeed had a confrontation with him. Well, we saw and that. I mean, we saw that, and I mean, we had the testimony of the zombie Muhammad atheist guy, and, not, and you just say there was testimony of the cop. We have the video footage. I mean, sorry, there's not a lot of doubt left there. So what did the judge say? The judge, and I have the audio of the trial itself. The judge cited Islamic law. The judge held up and waved a Quran. The judge said that this would get the infidel victim killed in Muslim countries. The judge dismissed the case. Because, again, according to the Sharia, this is offensive to Muslims. Now, it is true, and, Pamela, that in countries like Saudi Arabia, what this atheist did was against law. I mean, Saudi Arabia, the Koran, is their constitution. But in America and in Canada, we have freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and, frankly, freedom to be offensive to any religion. What, what's going to happen? Uh, or is there an appeal going on for the judge saying, you know, you would have had Ezra, worse happen to you in, in a Muslim country? Ezra... I don't care, as an American, we don't care about the barbaric code, legal code of other countries. It is absolutely irrelevant. And under the First Amendment, free speech is protected speech. It, it, it protects ideas that we like, not just ideas, not just ideas that we like, but ideas that we don't like. Because then who would decide what's good and what's forbidden? This judge, uh, the government, or in the case of, uh, you know, the United Nations, the Organization of Islamic Conference, this judge ruled according to the Sharia. He actually said that the First Amendment does not give you the right to offend people. Hello? That's exactly what it does. Yeah. It gives you the right to offend people. The fact that he had a Quran and he was waving it at the trial, and he admonished Mr. Pierce, that's the victim, the infidel victim who was dressed as the zombie Muhammad, and explained Islamic law to him, and explained Islamic sensibility, and explained to Mr. Pierce that being a Muslim is not just a religion. This is the word to use. It defines their essence. You know, I've got, uh, I've got a bit of a transcript from the audio that you have on your website. Uh, the judge said to the assault victim here that... Um, what you have done is completely trashed their essence, their being. They find it very, very, very offensive. I'm a Muslim. I find it offensive. But you have that right. But you're way outside your boundaries of First Amendment rights. This is what, and I said, I spent about seven and a half years living in other countries. I mean, and like you say, waving a Quran. What would happen if, I mean, but you're saying the judge himself was not? Muslim, even though he was waving his No, I, I, I don't think the judge is a Muslim. And honestly, to be frank with you, that's not the issue. Yeah. That's a tangential ancillary issue. But this is yeah. always what happens with Sharia. We always get off the main topic. The right. main point here is Sharia law in American courts. Well, that's right. I mean, he was, judge, imagine if a judge had whipped out a Christian Bible and said, here in the book of Leviticus, it says this, this, and this. Or, I mean, could you imagine the, the freak? You're right. It doesn't matter if the judge himself is Christian. He's applying Sharia law, and he let a guy go for a because of it. Yes, and here the guy choked 
uh, Mr. Pierce, tried to pull off his sign saying that he was Muhammad, pulled off his fake beard that was glued on. The boy, the, the, the man was with his son. You have a policeman. It wasn't a he said, said, she said, the way Judge Martin said it was, because the policeman said that the uh, defendant, uh, um, uh, his name is uh, Al, Al Bayomi. Mr. Tarak Al Bayomi had admitted to the policeman that he, there was a physical confrontation, and so he lied on the stand. The judge doesn't even pursue the perjury charge. He dismisses the case. He admonishes the infidel victim for violating Sharia law. Oh. This is astonishing. This is an astonishing case. It I will tell you. Much. And we're we're going to work to have this judge removed. That is the next step, just for knowing. Well, keep us posted. We can find out more at PamelaGeller.com. Is that right? That's absolutely right. It's Atlas Shrugs. You can go to PamelaGeller.com. This case, this is just unfolding, and I assure you it's, there will be ripple effects in this country. So glad for the update, Pamela. You keep fighting for freedom and for the First Amendment freedoms in New York City.